I'm studying across the board. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the City of San Marino Design Review Committee meeting. Today is Wednesday, February 5th. My name is Kevin Chang and I will be conducting this evening's meeting. Will you please and stand and join me for the flag salute, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Staff, can we have a roll call, please? Thank you, Chair. Committee Member Lacombe. Committee Member Lacombe. Here. Committee Member Chow. Present. Committee Member Brody. Here. Vice Chair Bandage. Present. Okay. Chair Chang. Present. Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, I'll first go over the procedure for this evening's meeting. Uh, each committee member has received the plans and has reviewed every item on the agenda and has visited each site. The general order of the hearing will, each case will be as follows. The committee will ask staff for any questions they may have. The chair will then ask the applicant or the applicant's representative to comment on the proposal. The hearing will then be open to the public and the chair will ask for comments for, against, or about the project. In all cases, please come forward and state your name and address and please limit your comments to no more than three minutes as we have a very long agenda uh, this evening. At the conclusion of the public comments, the public hearing will be closed and no further comments from the public will be accepted. The chair will then ask for comments from each of the committee members. If there is no motion for approval or denial, the DRC has the option of continuing the application to a future meeting. In the event of a denial, it's hoped that the applicant will have heard comments during the public comment period and during deliberations that will be useful in resubmitting an application. It is also important for the property owner to understand that once a project is approved by the DRC, the drawings do become legal documents. If any changes are made to the project subsequent to the approval without obtaining proper approval of those changes, the property owner is in fact breaking the law. There is a risk of having to change the project back to the originally approved design or paying a fine to the city of San Marino equal to the greater 5% of the project valuation or $2,500 and then resubmitting those changes made to the project back to the DRC. It's also important to understand that there is a 15-day appeal period after an action has been taken for the applicant or any interested parties to request the Planning Commission to review and act on the case. After all agenda items have been heard, two, two design review committee members will conduct an open forum. It is at this time that residents or their representatives may ask the committee members about current or future projects related to their property. Committee members can discuss the design with you but cannot comment on how they may vote on the project. Uh, we will now move to the public comment portion of the hearing. If there's any members of the public that to come forward to speak on non-agendized items, now would be the time. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and move on to our first agenda for the evening. Uh, staff, please. Thank you, Chair. The first item is design review case number DRC 19-80 and DRC 19-81 for the property located at 3325 Monterey Road. Um, the applicant is coming back to the committee since the last meeting for a proposal to construct a first and second story addition and exterior modification to a um, structure that is identified as eligible as a historic resource. Um, additionally, the project also includes a new um, detached three-car garage. Since the last hearing, the applicant has um, revised the design mostly to remove um, one um, car stall from the um, attached to the home. The original design included a two-car garage attached to the first floor of the home and now it's only a one-car garage. The applicant also has reduced the second floor height by one foot um, in order to address the committee's concern um, in terms of the addition overpowering the um, existing uh, vertical element of the home. Um, additionally, the applicant has um, provided substantial information to the historic assessment report in response to committee members' concern about how um, the project um, contractor will go about preserving the, um, the existing historical elements on the home. And the historic consultant is also available to answer questions for you tonight. Overall, staff is able to support the proposed project, finding it that the overall building footprint and massing, um, since it has been re it have been reduced and now is more compatible with the neighborhood, um, additionally, the committee was concerned about a 
rear facing um, balcony that was coming out of the master bedroom. That balcony has since been removed from the project altogether. Um, staff is able to support um, the proposed material, finding that it does comply with the Secretary of um, the Interior Standard for the Treatment of Historic Property. And the historic consultant can, spe um, can speak on um, the 10 guideline if the committee wish to um, um, obtain more information about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for staff from committee members? Seeing none, uh, did you have a question? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we will now have the applicant present. Is that applicant present? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Alex Chen. Uh, address is 8730 Huntington Drive, City of St. Gabriel. Uh, we have been working on this project for some time now. Our goal is still the same, is that to preserve and rehabilitate about this property. We wanted to bring the building back to its normal uh, glory time and making the, this project will really blend into the community. Uh, especially this is a one-of-a-kind architectural uh, um, style. However, during this uh, process, we encountered many uh, challenges. One of the challenges was the oak tree. Uh, as by now, you should, uh, I have all the documents uh, done by office report that everything that we have designed will not damage the tree and so forth. Um, <coughs> and the, I, since earlier, uh, uh, Ms. Chu already mentioned about all the changes that we have been made. I don't want to take the time because it is a long agenda for you. And all the changes are in bubble, uh, in our drawing set. And the uh, first few pages talk about the um, preservation area, which we will have uh, our consultant architect, uh, architectural historian to talk about that. And the, all the changes being uh, delta on the pages. So if you uh, can find those changes very easily, uh, what's been discussed uh, since last meeting, okay, that would be the, my brief uh, presentation. Right now, I'd like to bring the architectural uh, historian to the stage. Okay. I uh, printed the PowerPoint. I didn't want to deal with the technology. So sorry, sorry to interrupt. Just a quick, quick question. Sure. Uh, you're going to do a presentation on PowerPoint. Is there something different or changed from the last time you presented to us? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. If we can highlight on those. Um, yes. Um, I also brought a large print on the character features with the preservation recommendations. So my name is Dr. Margarita Jarabek. Director of Historic Resources at ESA 626 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles. Um, I'm going to go move through this very quickly. I would recommend that you open to the first page, the title Historic Status. That's a summary of the historic status. We don't need to go over that. We'll go to the next slide, which is on Arvin Ferner. You would ask us to do research on Arvin Ferner, and now I'm going to uh, I can summarize, or this is also in our report, if you want to look at this, but basically um, he uh, was given the job once he became superintendent of Lacey Park to um, provide a consultation to the residents of the neighborhood on the landscape, on the development of their landscape development uh, of the landscapes to be compatible with with Lacey Park, and so there's um, there's a uh, some likelihood that he may have been um, involved in the development of the historic landscape. So that was that's basically what we found, um, and their findings are in, incorporated into our revised report. Um, so um, I wanted to go to the character defining features, which is the next page. Um, about the landscape. Um, so the board in place scored concrete walkway and steps, the concrete planner at the west property line, the stuccoed concrete garden wall, the concrete fountain slash pond, 
the grass yard, the plantings along the facade, and the trees to be retained. Um, then the next page is about the character defining features of the residence, which I don't think we have to go over because I presented that last time. The following page continues that discussion, again, to the following page, although there's a photograph that shows um, a historic view of the, of, the, of the water feature at the front of the house. So uh, there are several pages more of character defining features. Um, then we get to the proposed project. We'll just page through those till you get to the landscape rehabilitation slide. So um, since we met last time, um, ESA worked with the client's landscape architect to review the character defining features of the original landscape. So the existing character defining features and then we also looked at the historic photographs and following the Secretary of Interior standards for the preservation of historic landscapes, we identifi identified the original species of the plants that were in the original landscape and then we identified which plantings still remain and we also were able to place and restore the landscape according to the historic photographs. We did not find a planting plan, an original planting plan, but we, we developed a, a landscape preservation plan based upon the original historic photos. So that's, that is what is represented in the proposed landscape plan. So you can see on the next page, the planting plan includes boxwood, bottle brush, folly, and flax that would be planted in a staggered manner along the garden wall. Agapanthus, bottle brush, and ginger would be planted surrounding the concrete fountain as they originally were. Lilies, Eugenia, and a concrete heron statue would be introduced into the fountain to restore it. Once um, and then the open turf, turf would remain at the front yard as with the existing tree, which is uh, a tree that was there um, originally, although it's, it's mature now. <laughs> Along the concrete planter adjacent to this existing sidewalk, Bougainvillea and white lantana would be planted. These plantings, as they originally did, would offer texture and variation and a sense of naturalism when viewed in contrast with the rectilinear modern residence in a manner similar to the original historic appearance of the property as depicted in the historic photos. Um, the asphalt driveway would be removed and replaced with scored concrete referencing the original driveway configuration. Um, and then uh, a non-extent planter box, in other words, one that has disappeared but was in the original um, landscape, would be re recreated according to the historic photographs. And, Albizia would be included around the new planter. So that is what we're doing to rehabilitate the landscape. Um, the next few pages are about the impacts analysis and the standards review, which we went over before and are in the report. Um, so that goes on for a little while. Um, and so then we get to, um, we found the project was in conformance with all of the 10 standards, including the landscape. <coughs> and that um, the mitigation recommended is again, a HAPS report to document the existing conditions prior to the development of the project. Um, and then um, uh, um, the development of a preservation plan, um, a detailed preservation treatment plan, um, and prepared scaled mock-ups for character finding architectural features. Um, so uh, that would be for the features that would be replaced in kind. In other words, if something's deteriorated beyond repair and needs to be replaced in kind, there would be a mock-up. Um, otherwise, everything would be repaired and restored. So um, we uh, have a mitigation measure here that um, prepared. Um, and then we have a preservation plan treatments according to this, the, uh, the National Park Service preservation briefs which uh, are the guidelines for um, preservation treatment. Um, so we've included um, the preservation briefs for cultural landscapes, for historic concrete, historic stucco, um, historic cast stone, historic tile, um, historic wood windows, exterior paint on um, woodwork. Um, so those are the, the preservation briefs that apply. And then I gave, um, a printout of the character defining features again uh, and the applicable preservation briefs in the right hand column. So, um, 
that's where we are now. Um, and we feel that um, the recommendations that we um, provided have been incorporated into the plans. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Uh, is there any questions for the preservation of the um, I just <clears throat> was curious, what is, um, I mean, is this, as you know, the pocket this week for this item was about this high, and I read almost all of it, but um, I'm sure I could have missed a lot. What is, is done in these situations to, <clears throat> um, to ensure the correct follow through on the preservation of those elements? So, as part of the <clears throat> preservation plan, in addition to um, the initial plan, um, there's uh, plan reviews uh, to ensure that the plans developed for construction comply with the standards, and then there's construction monitoring during construction to ensure that if there's any unanticipated discoveries or any change orders or anything, that the decisions that are made um, are done in conformance with the standards. And there's construction monitoring reports. And Every those are all done by whom? I'm so sorry to interrupt. The preservation consultant. By a qualified by preservation your... consultant. Me or another qualified preservation consultant. And those reports are submitted to the city every time I go out to the site and her, her monitoring report gets submitted to the city. And at the end of the project, there's a substantial completion report that documents how the project conformed with the standards. Thank you. Are there any other questions for <coughs> Can I ask, uh, how how many times is it a weekly thing and that people check that so they would check on the yeah, project? The way, that's a good question. Um, it, every project is different. It depends on the construction schedule. Uh, normally, um, I would go out initially and tag everything that has to be retained. I put blue tape that says keep or retain on the features because I do not want there to be any mistakes and I've learned that this is what I need to do to work with construction crews. Plus we have the character defined features matrix that is the Bible for the contractor. Then there's the demolition and I go out there during demolition and monitor the demolition because that's a sensitive time for the historic building. And then during construction, depending upon what's going on with construction, I work with the construction team and the architect to figure out what the construction, construction schedule is and when it's important for me to be there to monitor. So it's periodic monitoring. It, um, depending upon the project, um, you know, there, I might go out um, weekly for a month and then I might go every two weeks um, and then eventually every month. It depends on the, the construction project, but there's, there's a, there's, there's different periods of intensity and then there's periods when I don't really need to go until something comes up. So um, that's that's how it usually works. Um, what what uh, parts of the character defining features are at the most risk of being damaged during demolition? Well, I mean, most of the demolition is occurring on the interior. Um, there's, I would say, The most sensitive features, I think, are um, you know, in that front courtyard where the the entrance is um, on that that main front tower. Um, so the the changes that are occurring, I guess, on the east east facade, but along the driveway, is that the east facade? So that would be the area where there's the most change happening, and that would be an area that we should watch carefully. Um, and then around the other side of the house where the addition is going on, that's an area that is sensitive. Where the addition is on the back. The back of, so there's the main front facade and then there's the courtyard behind. And then there's the new addition going with, and where the wing connects to the historic building. That would be the other area where um, physical change is going to occur. Um, those are the, the basic primary areas. 
is, is it, is it, how likely is it that things are damaged during this process? Is it well, if we do it right, very unlikely. <laughs> um, the things that cause damage are unanticipated discovery type things that you haven't planned for. Um, say you open up a wall and all of a sudden you see something that's historic or the, maybe the building is made differently than you thought or something like that and you have to figure out how you're going to conform with the standards. Those are the situations. That's why construction monitoring is important. Are there other questions? Okay. Yeah. So on the uh, historical preservation part, um, just a follow-up question. So if you find something that's not to your standard or expected standard, how is that information communicated to Good the building department? So, um, when there's a change order, I need to approve it. I need to approve it and document that that change order and the decision that's made would conform with the standards in writing. And that would be communicated to the building department. Um, but I, I would give that to the project manager and the project manager would communicate it to the building department. Um, so, you know, every time I go out, I do a monitoring report, and that monitoring report then goes to the building department or the planning department, however you want it, want it. whichever, whatever, wherever you, it goes to, in this case, I guess it would be the building department because this is a, this is a design review, not, not a historical commission. So, um, so the, the construction plans, the final review of the construction plans will include a report that states how the project conforms to the standards, and it will talk about any um, protection measures and whatever we need to do to protect the building from a preservation perspective, that last report. And that report is going to be the Bible for the construction process with regard to preservation. And then I go out and I monitor, like at the, at the at when, I, when I mark everything, prior to demolition. I document that. I prepare a report. You get a, you get a copy of it that has photographs of what was marked. And then the demolition happens and I document that process and that's photo documented and a report comes in that shows that it was done properly. So at each stage there is a documentation that happens. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move to public comment portion of the hearing. If there's any members of the public who'd like to come forward to speak for, against, or about this project, now would be the time. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member Chow. Well, first, we, since the first time, uh, I think uh, I reviewed um, back in December, this committee reviewed um, two months ago. I think the uh, design uh, certainly has made a lot of changes. And I, um, um, it looks to me all in the right direction. Uh, I really appreciate all the information, especially the uh, historic references um, provided. Um, it really gives you a, a a very nice reference. It's almost uh, gives you kind of a excitement, anticipation that uh, this house can be something really spectacular. It's not correct. Um, for example, a lot of the tiles, um, in all sides, on all sides, uh, front side, uh, currently don't even see the details because it's under two, three uh, coats of paint. Um, so, uh, moving on to the, the uh, other more significant, uh, significant parts, um, I personally really appreciate uh, the, uh, uh, the changes in that we put in to address all, uh, many, many issues. Um, from the, the back uh, facing balcony, now it's to the side, but it's also recessed uh, to the mass um, of, of the uh, proposed um, construction. 
changing from uh, attached two car garage to one car garage, um, tree protection plans, which is huge, very important. Uh, it, it, I think it's very helpful uh, to see uh, all the trees uh, proposed to be removed and the reason, uh, for example, there are seven of them, I believe, and uh, which ones um, will be replaced and what we're gonna do. And uh, on top of that, all the uh, uh, information we just heard uh, going back uh, beyond that, going back to uh, these, these planting, these plants that uh, originally uh, were there, uh, trying to bring uh, back all that. So um, um, I won't go on for too long because I'm sure um, our members have, have many other, notice many other things as well. Uh, so I'm just, I just want to say that uh, it's great to see the comments. Thank you, Committee Member Brody. Yeah, very well done. Um, I would, if, if it's not incorporated by reference already, I'd like these two handouts that we received to be part and parcel of the application process. Um, the uh, primary concern, I think, was voiced by several other committee members, is that we have a monitoring regimen uh, as we move forward so we don't vary from what has been put before us. Uh, certainly, if it's implemented as represented, I think it will be a, a real asset to the community, so I certainly could support it. Thank you. Committee Member Lake Hunt. Uh, um, the um, historic preservation portion of the project is, is excellent, and I think I could support all that, obviously. I have a concern regarding the um, still the privacy issue with the uh, second, the mass hanging towards the back of the property in regards to the house to the west. Uh, because that house sits on a odd shaped lot somewhat because it's a corner that uh, the way it was set uh, makes their backyard very very close to this person's side yard and uh, their their this this addition will be going all the way back to the property and then all the way to the neighbors and like their rear property uh, and they're going to lose a lot of that open space feeling, and they're going to possibly lose a lot of privacy, especially if that oak tree doesn't do so well, so close to the new construction. Uh, it's an unusual situation because of the way the other house is set, um, on a, kind of on an angle in the corner, uh, that it's not a true side yard or a backyard, or versus a regular side-by-side -side lot. Uh, uh, so that would be one issue I'd like that. Uh, west side of the house pulled in a little bit, uh, away from the side property line, and maybe a little bit um, towards towards the front. Yeah. Um, my other question is, or concern is, with removal of the guest house, um, right now the guest house is part of the back wall. It's integrated into the, the wall that, to the park. Uh, so when it's removed, uh, based on the slope of the backyard, uh, the house is going to have a direct view into the park and with those huge windows into the family room, the master bedroom, uh, because they're, it's going to be elevated, I believe. They're going to build the uh, house up off. They're going to fill in the land, right, and make it even with the rest of the house. So it's going to be very high, and then when that guest house is gone, you're going to be able to see into the park and the park doors, I assume we'll be able to see into the back of the house quite a bit. So that would be a privacy issue based on the park belonging to the community or not. And that would be a privacy issue for me, personally. Um, um, one other thing was I felt like maybe there was too many lights in the back, too many exterior lights. And then the last comment I'm sorry was the, uh, the balcony on the um, side facing the west neighbor. I would um, prefer that to be eliminated. Vice Chair Bynish. So, this was a lot to go through. I, as I discussed, as I mentioned earlier, our packet for this item was this tall. Um, <laughs> And in addition to that, I'm not sure if all the committee members here um, have seen the previous um, iteration of this. 
So I'd like to go into that a little bit and um, for the benefit of some of my um, fellow committee members who um, may not have been able to um, have been here in December or have gone through all of the material um, in its entirety. Um, <clears throat> I also am appreciative of the historical preservation uh, presentation, which was very thorough. thorough. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say that <clears throat> I want to point out that in December, a majority of this committee told the applicant that like a large number of concerns regarding massing, compatibility, privacy, and materials. Um, most of them, or many of them, were duly noted in the staff report. Others were mentioned. Um, in other words, a majority of the committee said on all of the findings that we have to make to a project, compatibility, privacy, and materials, that the applicant came up short. And by granting the applicant a continuance rather than a denial, which was certainly possible, this committee was saying, we are giving you a chance to change this based on our comments. Um, when I compared the plans from December to the plans submitted for today, I found that um, while there were a few changes, they were really insubstantial in the big scheme of things for this project. Um, they don't uh, amount to very much in terms of addressing the major problems that this, com that this committee communicated, particularly in terms of massing. It was clearly communicated at the last meeting by several staff members, by several committee members, excuse me, that the overall massing was not appropriate for a number of reasons. Um, I do recognize that a few feet of the space called a garage has been shaved off, but when we said at the last meeting that the addition's height shouldn't be taller than the existing building because it disrupts the large central volume, that is referenced in the historical report, we did not mean for the applicant to lower it somewhat, but still be taller than the home's existing height. Um, when we told the applicant in December that the rear addition was problematic, especially on the west side, we definitely didn't expect for all of that massing to still remain exactly the same as how we saw it in December. Um, there is still just an enormous amount of massing that is that seems kind of gratuitous. We have covered patios, and on top of that, something that is designed in a way that um, seems like it would be a massive balcony, which still poses, poses a privacy concern to the neighbor. I believe that that's what the neighbor's letter was referring to, not specifically one tiny balcony in the back. Um, we have trellises attached to that massing, in addition to that running right into the pool. We have extra space attached to the house, which is labeled as a garage, which I'm not even convinced that you could pull a car into that structure based on the way the driveway and the other three car garage is located. So we can't just add a giant space to a home and call it a garage, um, especially in this case where there's already all of this other kind of extra massing added. Um, so the fact that all of these massing problems were not fixed is troublesome to me. While I do recognize that a few small changes were made, I'm not denying that. I just don't think it amounts to what it needs to for this historical property. Um, as we can see from you know the long list of projects in front of us tonight, um, you know, as we mentioned before, the time available for staff and volunteers like us is limited, and by coming back with most of our concerns still in the plans, this applicant is not giving the impression that this is being approached in a process of good faith. Um, you know, all of these problems with massing that were not changed, I think that they're already very concerning just by themselves. But on top of that, what really makes this a a bigger problem um, is the fact that in the last meeting it was discussed in quite a lot of detail that all this extra massing would pose, particularly in the rear west addition, would pose a very significant danger to the health of the very giant oak tree for many reasons. Um, the obvious one being you know, construction a few feet from the trunk of the tree. 
So while I do appreciate all that went into that landscaping plans after it was you know, reminded that Armin Turner was part of the project, I really appreciate that, and that is you know, a good addition to what is in front of us. Um, it's kind of eclipsed by the fact that nothing was done about the oak tree and the massing. Um, which was already, you know, a concern expressed last time. So, you know, the um, the construction, including soil compaction that's needed for grading, poses a great danger to this oak tree. Building a large addition well under the canopy of the oak tree. I mean, it's not just a little bit under the canopy, it's under half of the canopy of this oak tree. It can't be understated how much this invades the space that an oak tree this important to the property um, is. Um, if it was going a little bit under the canopy, we would say, well, okay, a little bit. But this is a lot more than a little bit. Um, the applicant has used the bare minimum standard of nine feet for a protection zone for the trunk of the tree and hasn't even met that because the nine foot protection goes, goes underneath the construction of this uh, addition of this trellis covered porch um, thing. So why on a, on a historically, like why on a historically significant house with landscaping done by Armin Turner next to Lacey Park would there be a minimum standard for this tree? That's a big issue here. <clears throat> so all of these issues, in addition to the ones I mentioned earlier, were all clearly expressed in the last meeting. And I feel that by casting aside most of the difficult issues in this design in terms of the massing, in terms of the privacy, um, you know, by pretty much ignoring that, the applicant has to know that a denial is, is possible. Um, again, our resources of the city and this um, committee are not infinite. And I am not encouraged by the limited amount of progress that's been in front of us today. Thank you. Um, I would agree with some of the comments and disagree with other comments. Uh, I think that the applicant has made changes that they see fit and attempted to address, if not in, in its entirety. Uh, they have compromised and made the changes that they are willing to make, yet still make the home and the renovation uh, theirs. Um, I think it's be a greater disservice to not see the home restored and rehabilitated uh, and just wait another 15, 20 years for the next individual to purchase it. And with the hope and the prayer that they would do what we ask and, and to the exact specificity of, of lot lines and um, footprints. Um, I think the applicant has shown great diligence in doing what they've done. Uh, the task and the paperwork in front of you, uh, which you noted, which committee members have noted, is a monumental task. It's not something that happened overnight. It's and you know I, I do recognize that it's use utilize a great amount of our resources, both our staff, um, our own volunteer time, <laughs> as well as the city's time to evaluate this. Uh, and I think they have done the property, the service it requires. I'd be uh, in support of the project, given what is presented before us with the addition of conditions that the Historic American Building Survey Level 3 report is conducted, that the preservation treatment plan is conducted, and that ongoing construction monitoring during the construction phase of the project would be conducted. Um, I would also ask that the city uh, I require a three-month um, progress report month every three months uh, that conditions of approval are being met and that the applicant would be required to show that. Um, otherwise, with the comments, I, I think the project is approvable and I would support it this evening. Do we have a motion? Yes. I, <coughs> yeah, I move to approve DRC 19-80 and 19-81 with the conditions referenced by the chair that uh, and as well as some of the comments I had made that the uh, documents uh, just handed out or incorporated as part and parcel of the application itself uh, that the preservation especially the uh, tree uh, uh, be monitored and the monitoring uh, the only 
difference I'd say is um, a two month progress monitoring versus three because things do move quickly. Uh, and uh, the, the city should certainly uh, uh, make sure that w what we have uh, before us is being implemented. And uh, unless you think there's another condition, that would be uh, the motion. I think that's the motion that's on the floor. Is there a second for that motion? Before I second that, can I ask a quick question? Sure. The staff has noted the three uh, condensers. Is that already included? We don't need to make it that into the motion? Correct. Um, the condenser in the side yard issue is included in the condition of approval sure. document in front of you, and all of that, in, in all of the condition in that document is remaining as is, unless the committee feel otherwise. If you want to amend that or remove any of those conditions, but they are remaining as is with the addition of the um, condition that the chair and um, commission um, committee member Brody mentioned. Um, I second the uh, motion that. Uh Seconded. Uh, we're having discussions still. There uh, was he was asked. He was asked. He was asked to make a question, and I was going to ask another question after that. Or, I think no. that you did. With regards to the motion that's open right now, or no, not the air conditioning. Yes. Okay. There's four all together. There's three on one side and one on that. Correct. Um, city code only permits two conditioner in the side yard. So this is part of the motion. Part of the. Correct. Um, that issue was um, is mentioned in the staff report, and the condition of approval is provided in the condition of approval document for you um, in your packets to um, for all mechanical equipments on the property to meet city code. So to clarify, the condition would be that the project would meet city codes, which would limit the conditioning units to two. Correct. Okay. Is that answer your question? That's right. Yes. Not four, but two. Does that answer your question? Chair, so, go I, do, I do have a question about um, the amendment to the original motion. Um, committee man, member mentioned that he would like to see um, tree preservation monitoring for every two months. However, earlier in the in the motion, it was um, three months progress there was a, report. There was a preservation treatment plan, which was one of the recommendations in the uh, historical assessment. Mm -hmm. And then a tree preservation was an additional uh, Conditional approval, which Commissioner uh, Committee Member Brody had mentioned, and that specific report to be every two months. Every two months. Okay, I got. It. Thank you. Okay, and this this tree report was from last year, so was the status of trees the same? The applicant has. Yes. yes. Um, I have Did not gone to the backyard to assess the condition of those trees. Um, however, there is an active tree removal permit pending um, the city um, urban forest to review and approve. And they will, if they need verify. to, uh, um, verify that information and make the determination there. So if we approved it tonight, and the condition of the tree have to be addressed for their health then? The trees would have to be per what the tree preservation plan pre presents, and that, I, I'm hearing that that would be validated by the city. It would start, even if they didn't pull a permit for a year, it would start sooner than that? Just to maintain the trees? The we can certainly um, include a condition um, if you are concerned that the tree removal permit will not be processed um, in a timely manner to address your concern. Or just if we did approve it and then they waited a year that the trees would just be left for the next year and not maintained like as they are in the condition right now, right? So I guess the, your request is that can we condition that the trees will, the tree preservation plan will be enacted upon our approval this evening up until construction starts and thereafter, right? Is that is that what you're well, so requesting? Checking on the trees help right, that, the next year. that if we approve the project this evening, the trees of the preservation plan will be enacted, and they will can start doing so even prior to beginning construction. Okay. We would we can add that as a condition as well. Yes. Yes. However, do you agree um, to the motion? I, I would. Yes. Okay. Um, do you want to designate a responsible party, rather it be a uh, landscape architect, or what will satisfy this committee's? Concerning the urban forest, urban forest, urban city's urban, urban forest, urban forest. Okay, we'll do that. 
Now, that's the motion. That's the motion. Roll call, please. And the second. There was a second, second by committee member Chow Thank to you. that motion. Thank you. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Brody? Yes. Committee member Lacon? No. Vice Chair Batnich? Uh, it's a no, and I just want to say, because I didn't really have a chance to say it while we were supposed to be discussing the, the still in discussion, that I have the sense that we are sort of exhausted from this project, so we're just kind of going, let's just get it passed. And that frustrates me um, as a committee member who, who has reviewed this very closely, that I don't believe that the changes made were significant in any way whatsoever, um, and just sort of passing it because we're tired of it. That's how I, that's what I'm hearing from the other, from some of the other committee members. Um, and I think that's unfortunate, but anyway, my vote is no. Thank you. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. We'll move on to the next agenda item of the evening, agenda item number two, case number DRC 19-61. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this item is located at 1380 Bellevue, Haven Road. The applicant is proposing to, con uh, to construct a single story addition. Um, this project was last heard by the commission on December 4th. Um, um, staff want to clarify that on your plans, you are seeing a new um, side yard gate and a pedestrian gate. Um, along the north property line. These features are shown for reference only. The committee um, is not required to um, approve these items. They will be um, processed under separate building permit. As far as the first story addition concerns, staff is able to make the finding that the, the project is compatible with the neighborhood. Um, the, uh, the applicant has revised the plans to pull the addition further back to provide the north neighbor additional setback. Um, the applicant is holding the setback at 11 feet 6 inches until the end of the adjacent neighbor's home um, in respect to the neighbor's privacy concern. Um, outside of that, staff um, also find that the transom windows along the east elevation um, appears to be um, busy and incompatible with the style of the home. Staff is recommending that these windows be removed. Um, outside of that staff is able to support the project. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from two members of staff? Seeing none, is the applicant present? Hi, my name is Ron Louis. I'm the designer on the project. Your address, please, sir. Uh, my address is 5936 Temple City Boulevard. Thank you. Temple uh, City. Uh, as you can see from the last meeting, we uh, made some changes. We moved that top out a seven foot back. So now it's like a, like 105 feet from the curb now. And we moved the master bedroom back. And I also cut like three feet off of the back. So the rear yard now is like 40 feet rear yard setback. And the master bedroom now basically faces the north side garage. Uh, uh, you mentioned you cut three feet from the back bedroom. It's, is that correct? Yes. It's listed as two. Yeah, two feet. Okay, two feet. I did cut feet off off the back, so the backyard now, like I said, it's, it's a 40-foot setback. All I'm required is a 20-foot setback, right? For a rear yard setback. So now I made it 40 feet setback. So, and then another issue is that the house is actually the fifth, would be the fifth largest house on the, on the block. And as far as the, there's 51, we counted 51 homes in the area, and our house comes up to about the average square footage. So, and uh, what else? As you can see on the drawings, I did uh, I did add the footage on there to make up some of that footage I added to the family. 
But again, that's uh, those were the changes I made. Uh, we're within all the codes, five foot right set back on the new on the new addition. Are there any questions uh, for the applicant from the members? I have a couple of questions. Um, on the north side, yes. north elevation, uh, currently there's a chain link fence. Is that going to be removed once you build the wall? Eventually, we'll probably build the wall. Probably, or will be removed, you know, for sure. Well, I think we want to wait until construction is done to, because I don't want to build anything now. But you're asking me if, if we're going to build Once the it's wall? Completed, yeah. Yeah, probably so, yes. If, if you were approved. Correct. Okay. So, because the, the new um, block wall will go from the front basically all the way to the back. Uh, well, we've been discussing that with the neighbors and we're talking about maybe uh, halfway to the front to give the, the north neighbors more room for their driveway. But in your plan, it also says in the back there's the same yard. We're going to take it all the way to the rear yard, yes. Okay. So it seems that you're not too sure. Well, basically, yeah, because it's up to the owners whether they want to do that. And I think that issue is, is that part of the design review board uh, issue? Okay, next the question. Um, is that you said that plenty of cypress trees will be well, planted? Well, as far as a, a, a privacy issue, yes, we will but plant. What is plenty? Like how many or where? We will plant it on the on that north side to give the, the neighbors the privacy that they want. Okay. How so many trees? Uh, I, I mean, there so no any, specific plan. Uh, yeah. No specific plan. Uh, I haven't hired an architect, a uh, landscape architect yet, to determine how to get that privacy. And probably every three, four feet, I would imagine that. Any other questions? Can we remember later? Thank you. Um, the, the the corner that stuck out before with the north neighbor and the view out of her kitchen window. How much further is that that corner? That we, that we pushed it back uh, seven feet, almost lined up with their garage. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now open up to uh, public comment. If there's any members of the public like to come forward. Please do so now. Just state your name and address. to soften the view of my kitchen. We're free enough to start the cement block, cement block wall approximately 25 feet back from the front of, the, of their house. I have enjoyed a beautiful landscape view of trees, uh, shrubbery, and flowers and grass for 46 years. Their consideration of my concerns in advising their plans is appreciated. I also express my appreciation to the DRC member for taking the time to personally come to my home to look at the site and my, and my concerns about it. Also, I'd like to express appreci my appreciation for, to all of the DRC members for taking time out of their busy lives to sit on this committee. In addition, I sincerely appreciate the city staff for their assistance in this process. Since my concerns with the project at 1380 Valhaven have been addressed, I support the plan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there any other members of the public that come forward to speak for or against or about this project? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Committee member Lake Hunt.
came and gave her approval. Uh, I was curious how she felt. Uh, uh, the one question, the one, um, I, I did approve the project today. I have uh, one question about Eda's uh, window and I'm going to the windows. The staff, staff recommendation. Um, you, you do have the discretion um, not to impose a condition. Staff is recommending that the committee consider um, the project to remove the transom window above uh, the doors. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Thank you. Uh, Commune, uh, Vice Chair Banish. Um Yes. Um, I do see the changes um, that were made. Um, they're, I would call them significant. Um, I am glad that you worked with the neighbor to her satisfaction. Um, I think that the solution to uh, not, let's call it the pop out, for lack of a better word, um, to not pop out until after the neighbor's um, property uh, is a reasonable compromise. Um, and it's definitely a better plan. Even though only two feet is cut off of the, the back bedroom, I, you know, I'll, I'll take it. It's, it's, it's better. Um, I know it's better. I'd like to hear what my colleagues think about um, before I make a final decision, but um, it's encouraging. Thank you. Can we have everybody? Yeah, I have a mixed, little bit mixed feelings about this one, but uh, in all frankness, um, uh, I could approve it. I don't want to be over some of the things that uh, the window fenestration, things like that, they bother me a little bit, but. Uh, apparently, uh, I think it passes first. Vice Chair Bandish, did you have something to say about the finish? Yes, I just completely forgot to mention that, uh, yes, I believe that the transom window should be removed. Um, that's uh, that's Thank a you. good suggestion. And, uh, Commander Member Chapel. Yes, I also have a little bit of misleading about this. Uh, I have a little concern about the massing. Uh, I've seen that as being addressed a little bit, and, uh, and uh, certainly um, the concern from the neighbor uh, needs to be addressed. And, and uh, hearing the, the neighbor supporting the project, uh, I think it does mean something. Um, I would have liked to know, um, just to have seen a, a more um, precise um, location for the wall. And, uh, and also how many sides trees, uh, because I think the trees uh, is important to to uh, for the look, and uh, certainly um, it, it's important for the privacy as well. So I would like to make sure that this um, get uh, carried out. Um, you know, right now it just says plenty, and uh, I, I don't think it'll be fair if we end up say uh, if it's good for the tree. Um, end up saying only, say two, uh, for example. So um, I don't know if that's something you can make it into condition, but uh, other than that, uh, we have too much that. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think the changes have been uh, beneficial changes to the overall project. I think the project as submitted uh, is approvable with the conditions that the transom windows be removed per staff uh, recommendation as well as um, the notation that the cypress trees uh, be planted and that um, staff work with uh, the applicant and, and the applicant will neighbor to, to certify or sign off on the adequacy of those trees being in place. Um, I can add to that, or are you done with that? And just there was comments of a wall that was going to be built, and I didn't see that in the plans uh, specifically. It was sounded like it was negotiations, but if that's also a condition that the neighbor was told, uh, we would also condition approval upon that wall. Is there a motion? Uh, I don't have a motion, but just continuing the the discussion. Um, I was just going to say. Um, Cypress trees may not be the best thing for that. I, I personally don't really care whether cypress trees are there or not. 
I just want the neighbor to be happy with whatever's planted there. You know, cypress trees can go 20, 30, 40 feet. That may not be what you want looking out, I guess, your kitchen window. Yeah. Is that where it is? Yeah. Um, so maybe in just a small note, instead of maybe cypress trees, um, maybe um, shrubs or trees to be agreed upon for privacy by the neighbor and working with the neighbor and staff. There seems to be good intentions here on all parties. So would you like to make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> um, Screening landscaping. Screening landscaping. Screening landscaping. Screening landscaping. Yeah, I mean to to the desired height. Um, okay. So I will move to approve 1380 Bellhaven Road on the condition of the removal of the transom windows and the uh, addition or continuation of the four foot wall. I believe it's a, I think it's a six. six. Okay, it's a six. This, it's a six. Is it, can the applicant confirm if it's a six foot wall? It says on the plan. Six foot. Six foot wall. Uh, the six foot wall and the planting of screening. Vegetation. Screening plantings to uh, working with staff and the neighbor. Motion, do we have, uh, by Vice Chair Manager, do we have a second? I'll second. Committee Member Brody with the second. Roll call, please. Committee Member Chow? Yes. Committee Member Brody? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Vice Chair Bennett? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we'll move on to agenda item number three, Desire Review Case Number DRC 19-19. 2200 Alamo Place. Staff report, please. Uh, Item three is a request for a street facing side yard driveway gate at 2200 El Molino Place. The proposed gate will be installed along Pascualito Drive. It will measure six feet in height and will consist of a matte black wrought iron frame to match the existing side yard fence. The sliding gate will be operated by an electrical motor located behind the existing concrete post for screening purposes. While the size and location of the proposed gate are inconsistent with the other properties on the block, staff recognizes that proximity to Stoneman School and San Marino Recreation Department generates additional foot traffic and creates a need for security and privacy. Otherwise, staff can support the project. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff from committee members? Seeing none, is the applicant present? Can you please come forward and state your name and address. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Tracy, and then the designer for the 2200 El Molino place. And then my address is 183 by 1 Colima Road. And then my customer would like to build up a new sliding. What's your last name? Your first name is Tracy? Uh, yeah, your last name? G-A-O. G-A-O. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Yeah. So my customer would like to build up the uh, sliding driveway gate just for the privacy because uh, we could check the location. Uh, my customer's house is a uh, corner lot and then in front of the house is the Elmore Vino and there was a stop sign and then the side yard it was the uh, has purely teacher drive and then the back it was the kindergarten. So the parents always uh, drop off or pick up the kids uh, to the kindergarten and then they always park in the car around the, the house and then they will walk through the house maybe twice one day and uh, it will be last uh, one hour so the whole day will be two hours so my customer they feel that there was no any pirates in the house and in the backyard so they would like to build a sliding gate in the just the driveway and they added a sitting, existing sliding, uh, existing iron fence will be uh, low change, we will keep it. We just want to do a sliding uh, driveway gate. Thank you. Thank Are there you. any questions for the applicant? Is, is there a gate there right now? I thought there was a gate there. No, there was no gate, no gate at all? Yeah, no gate at all. Is there, there was, there was a fence? Yeah, uh, uh, originally there was an uh, uh, iron fence in the main house size. And then the trading fence, uh, around four feet high in the left hand side, uh, it was connected to the kindergarten. So uh, why not we want to build a sliding gate to the uh, the garden size. 
the, the kindergarten side, but maybe not good because we need to stand up 18 feet. So why not we change the pen to the main house? So the gate will be slide to the main house, uh, not higher than the existing, existing iron fence. Uh, it will be kept six feet high, and the trading fence will be kept over there, uh, four feet high, we will keep it. And then the, uh, my plan is to to just plant some trees over there. Yeah, just keep, keep the trading fence. I have a question. How tall is that place? If you know it, how tall is the existing fencing that is would, would be adjacent to this driveway? The existing iron fence? Yes. Uh, it was six feet high. Six, okay. Yes. Yeah. So the gate will be the same height. And then we will slide to the main house, the existing iron fence. And um, if you will draw inside yes. their, their gate, their, their, their fence? Yeah, you will be outside. Yeah, you will inside. Yes, you will inside the existing iron fence. It will slide in this way. So this one is the existing iron fence. So it will be sliding. So I have crap child or anything. That's what I'm saying. Right? No, no. That that side view, it was the training fence, four feet high. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Um, you were saying that cars go into the uh, stone and. Sometimes, well, always park around your neighborhood, but right. well, that's kind of a bit. But do they have a park in your yard? They wouldn't drive through your existing opening and park in your park uh, in your property, right? In your driveway. Has that ever happened? I just want to clarify that. Oh yes, uh, they will park pretty good. Uh, I I go to the job site almost every day. I see they park pretty good. They will uh, keep the opening empty. Right. Yeah, but they will park around the house, and then they will, if not in the parking, they will park into this, car, this corner. So when they get off, they will bring the keys, walk through all the house. So just because you have a gate, how would that change the, the behavior? I'm sorry, that's okay, you don't have to answer that. I, I, I can, <laughs> yeah, that's I can but, save that for comment. Yeah, you, you try to Google Map? Uh, I visited the site. I, I oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, so they already moved, we moved the gate in the, the both hands of uh, the fence. Yeah, so why not all the things opening? Yeah. Are there any other questions for Alpine? Seeing that, thank you very much. We'll now move to open uh, the public comments. If there's any members of the public who'd like to speak for or against this project. Seeing that, we'll close public comment and move to committee member discussions. Committee member Chapman. Um, as I was um, referring to, uh, I hear the concern um, the, um, from the property owner. There, there are many cars, obviously, because there's a school there. And I'm looking at the photos I took two days ago. Um, one thing that I noticed that if we continue this whole wall that uh, the owner is proposing, then this whole block is nothing but walls. So, and currently, I kind of enjoy the little uh, green um, kind of a hedge wall uh, between the garage and Stoneman. And, um, but of course, you know, if, so the, my point is that if, the, well, the cars will always be parking up uh, on, on the street uh, around the property. So um, another, uh, my concern is uh, looking at the existing condition of the uh, of the wall. The it's it's poorly maintained. So my concern is that are we going to have like a not beautiful looking wall just occupying the whole uh, block um, in the future? So that would be my concern. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Member. Thank you. Mr. Burke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'll, I'll join with uh, my colleague here. I'm not a fan of uh, creating little mini fortresses, and that's what we're about to do here. Uh, I don't see anything that can't be resolved by way of uh, uh, decent planning. Uh, and, uh, in, in great part, that's already been done. So I'm, uh, I'm not in favor of this project at all. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Um, 
Until I came here and listened to committee member Chow, I was in favor of this. Um, I thought I'm satisfied with the materials, I'm satisfied with the design. I was a little hesitant about the height because I thought it was a little excessively high, but given the fact that the fencing, that it would kind of be even with the adjacent fencing, I thought it was okay, but um, committee member Chow raises a very, a very good point and I could go either way at this point. I, I'll just keep listening to my fellow committee members and make the decisions based on someone's motion. Thank you. Committee member Lane Hawk? Uh, no, I, I agree with what was said today, and I, I feel the same as uh, committee member Matt Nish. I was thinking that I was maybe leaning towards more in favor of it, some comments with the fence and the fortress. Uh, I think that I could um, look at um, I, I mean, agree to an extent uh, about not building fortresses and and, and and fencing up the entirety of the the, the city, uh, especially on especially busy um, areas or, or areas of, of great traffic. Um, specific to this home, I there already is an existing iron uh, wrought iron fence for I'd say a good three quarters of the side of the yard already. Um, what I would propose is that the same fence material be continued on in replacement of the existing chain link fence, if that's not what was already proposed, but it didn't seem like it. Is, is that what was the proposal? Is that the chain link fence is removed and you'll continue it with the same wrought iron? No, the chain link fence. Right, so I, my, my, my proposal would be to actually replace the chain link fence and put it with the same wrought iron, so that's all consistent throughout. Um, I actually see a benefit to this in that if there is a gate in the in the driveway, um, if there are young children and families walking through and along the, the sidewalk, once that gate opens, they are aware that a car is about to pull out and it, it prevents children and young children from running up onto the driveway um, given its proximity to the school. So I would be in favor uh, with the condition that the raw iron fence is continued for the, for the rest of the um, north facing elevation of the property. Do we have a motion? I move that uh, we approve the project with the condition that the raw iron continue for the north elevation of the property um, consistent with the existing fence. Do we have a second? Uh, I'll second it just for the... Uh, I'll second it. Um, I can we discuss the motion? My understanding is that we can yeah, discuss we motions. Can discuss. Okay, so given the fact that we can discuss motions, I'm wondering what um, what committee member Chow thinks of that. Given that he's the one who's sort of ahead of us on this a little bit, does that satisfy you or not? Aesthetically speaking, yes. I don't really see the value. I don't see, I, I don't like it. I think it looks like a fortress. Um, but one thing I did not concern, uh, did not consider before, was the safety issue that um, uh, Chair just brought up. And uh, if you see the gate moving, and then the kids will be, you know, anybody will, will notice that oh, there's a car coming out. Um, another big concern I have is just the current condition of the wall is poor for you. And, and you know, is, is that whole block is going to look like that? That's really. I'm really so hoping that maybe the applicant needs to come with a new well, project plan. I mean, we can't really, there's a really meaningful the make of conditions that hey, you need to maintain this. Yeah, there's too many conditions that have to be made. So, so can I also just landscaping? Maybe condition the, the fence to to move in two feet and providing green landscaping in front of us. So we're not Do we have anything pending right now? Or is there a motion pending? There's a motion that I have, and there's a pending second right now. But but there is additional conditions being proposed that perhaps to beautify and add additional landscaping uh, to the to the elevation to beautify that. It's so vague right now that we, we don't know. So we can have, I mean, so yeah. there is a motion. If there is. We could continue it in hopes that the applicant could address the, the um, or, excuse me, can we ask um, Ms. Choi for her suggestion? It was to plant, to condition planting. In front of the raw iron fencing. 
Yeah. Um, there the would be our, new. whatever we decide, whatever we would condition. <coughs> if it, the feel of the committee is that the entirety of the raw iron fence is not as nice, or then it would be for the entirety of the elevation. So um, we have a we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Seeing no second, is there any motion? Yes, I'll have a, a motion on DRC. 19-19 and let me just preface this by saying there's a lot that needs to be done uh, and uh, we're a long way from getting there and this is not something I believe that can be handled by conditions so I'll need to deny 19-19. I'll second that. Roll call please. Committee Member Chow? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Committee Member Brody? Yes. Vice Chair Batnich? Yes. Chair Chang? No. Motion carried. Thank you. And then we'll move on to our next agenda item for the evening. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Item number four is design review case number DRC 19 60, located at 2180 Lorraine Road. The applicant proposes to construct a single story addition, exterior modification, and to install front yard wall and gates. Staff is able to make the compatibility finding that the addition and exterior modification provide similar visual massing as neighboring single story structure. The roof extension with the arch opening is a feature found also in the legal neighborhood. Staff does not anticipate privacy impacts resulting from the project. The addition provides a new gable roof that is well integrated with the existing structure. The project provides natural wood windows with matching grids and wood surround. As for um, the front yard walls and gate, staff is able to find similar uh, front yard features on, on the same block. For that reason, staff um, find um, specifically located at 2170 and 2140 Lorraine Road. The location and height of the front yard wall will not create um, hazardous condition as they are um, substantially set back from the front and the side yard. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for staff? Seeing none, is the applicant present? Good evening. My name is Virginia Peka. I am the architect for this project. My address is 545 East Ladera Street in Pasadena. Thank you this, very much. Sure. Um, this is a very modest <coughs> project compared to the first one. Um, and it satisfies a need that the owner has for a little more public space in her uh, dining and breakfast area. I'm sorry for this, I'm fighting my article. Um, and we're basically extending the same roof line, the same materials. We're using um, TM cob windows and doors, matching the same um, configuration. They will be dual glazed, of course, to meet energy code um, with true divided lights. Uh, colors match the house. Um, we have the plus that the owner, who's in the audience, is um, a master gardener and has um, basically done all the native garden in the front. She wanted to have an area that was a little more private for dining outside and then because the kitchen is toward the front of the house and then she will make all of the modifications in her garden to accommodate the wall and then the plantings that need, would need to be moved for that. One question I have for you. Um, the front of the house um, is not changing. It, you know, and the distance between the front of the house and the um, sidewalk, there's a default requirement that when you add to the front, you have to have a survey of the front property line to the front of the house. Um, to have a surveyor come out and basically take that out was cost the owner $1,400 for this. So I'm not sure if y'all are aware of that, but there are cases where it's a city sidewalk and existing front of the house, and we've measured everything else in the house as, as professional architects, and I was surprised that that particular dimension need 
needed to be surveyed. So well, I'm surprised that you have not get paid. I know. Believe me, things cost more than you think they will. So anyway, I'm just bringing that up to you all, just not as a criticism because. Maybe because we did ask, and they said it was not something that the city could waive because it came from the DR DRC. So I'm just letting you know that a little flexibility there would be appreciated by the homeowner. Thank you. But right. are there any questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. You. We'll now open to public comment. Is there any members of the public to speak for or against about the project? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and move to committee member discussions. Committee, committee member Brody. Yeah, I think this is pretty straightforward, and uh, I have no problem approving it. Thank you. Committee Member Chow. Uh, one thing to add to that is uh, I know that um, I noticed staff had pointed out uh, the uh, comments in, in staff's comment. Um, the uh, front yard wall uh, needs to have um, recommends provision of a landscaping material in front of the wall to minimize the visual appearance of it. I think that's uh, partially addressed, and also just looking at the current property, uh, the, the, the front yard garden is beautiful. So I uh, think uh, I'm confident that uh, that will be uh, nicely resolved. Thank you. Can we remember later? I can support the project, and uh, I, I really appreciate the, uh, the team cop windows uh, matching the existing house. Thank you. Uh, I agree with comments made. I think it's a good addition, and I think it'll add to the overall um, home, and it's compatible with the, uh, the street, as well as uh, providing additional opportunities for the homeowner to continue to uh, add to her garden. Um, do we have a motion? I'll move to approve the RC 19, the R60. Committee member Brody with the motion. For a motion, I'll second. Roll call, please. Committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Brody? Yes. Committee member Laycon? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. We'll move on to agenda number 52851 Shakespeare Drive, DRC case number 19 96. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this project is located at 2851 Shakespeare Drive. The applicant is proposing to construct a single story addition in the back of the home to an existing single story <laughs> residence. Um, the home is located in a neighborhood that is predominantly single story. The addition is in keeping with the scale and massing and building footprint of other buildings in the neighborhood. Um, new windows are being proposed along the east and west side of the residence. However, um, the location of these new windows do not align with neighboring structure. Therefore, it will not have a direct um, sight line into the neighbor's um, homes. The addition is well in integrated with, ex with the existing residence in terms of the roof slope, architectural features, and exterior material. Um, for that reason, staff is um, supporting the project. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Seeing none, uh, is the applicant present? My name is Michael Chen. I'm at uh, 2211 South Hacienda Boulevard. I'm the designer of this. Uh, story house addition and I believe the whole addition is behind the main house. You will see anything at the front and we do, we're not doing any change at the front of the house. And all the roof, tire, window and uh, stucco, they all will match exactly the main house. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now open to public comment to members of the public to speak for against about this project. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member Lacon. Um, I can support the uh, proposed addition. Um, I think it's a Thank you. Vice Chair Banish. Um, so the way I look at it, kudos to the applicant for getting full of neighborhood approvals, showing a lot of good intent on reaching and discussing with neighbors <laughs> and getting them to thank you. Um, so the way I look at it, there's like two additions here. One addition is basically an addition to for the family room, and the other addition is this kind of wing going back 
into the property, which is um, a master bedroom or master. Um, so I find the addition for the new family room to be absolutely compatible with itself and with the neighborhood. And if that's all that was in front of us today, I would be that would be um, easily approvable for me. Um, it's the other addition that is more of a concern to me that's relating to compatibility. Um, and it's kind of a new trend that we're seeing a lot lately, which is these like wings on the sides of property, on near property lines that go very deep into um, the property that sort of um, awkwardly kind of stick out in a way um, that uh, takes away from just the typical sort of central massing of is so many of the homes in our city. Um, you know, I struggle with this when we see this coming up a lot because, you know, people want to expand and maybe that's just the easiest place to expand or or whatever, it's, it doesn't matter. But uh, in this case, I found it um, to be awkward, an awkward massing this addition, this wing, if you will. Uh, because if you look at the entire street, and I actually made a printout, but I can't find it because we have so many papers today. But if you look at, I can explain it verbally. If you look at the entire block, if the entire block follows the same development pattern, garage in the back, lots of open space, central massing of the home. And in between the garage and the home, there's yard, empty space, you know, landscaping, uh, you know, literally breezes going by the whole neighborhood into everybody's yards. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I mean, this illustrates it. They're all, you know, perfectly lined up. That doesn't mean that you can't bust out here and there, and, you know, it's, it's we're reasonable. But when you kind of put a whole wing back here, you're basically like blockading yourself in a way. You're blockading, or you blockade a word, but you're you're disrupting the pattern of the neighborhood and disrupting the um, the development pattern of the neighborhood. Um, and since this entire block has not, you know, no no home has disrupted that pattern of development. You know, it's, it's especially awkward on this street in a way that it might not on some other blocks that have had this happen, you know, that have already had this happen many times. So it's not that I mind at all that there's additional massing here. I don't think that more massing is a problem here. It's just where the massing is for this one part, for this wing, if you will. Um, so, um, you know, it kind of compartmentalizes the backyard space in an awkward way and ends up, you know, rendering yards less useful or making the space very awkward to use. Um, so, again, the family room addition keeps the pattern of the neighborhood. This wing does not. Um, so, bottom line is I would like to see the applicant either shift the massing of that part of the addition to respect the prevailing pattern of the neighborhood or reduce how much that wing jets back into the property. I think if that's done, this will be an approvable project for me. So I would hope to continue this and, and uh, see a little shifting in the massing. Thank you. Committee Member Brody. Yeah, I, uh, I looked at the uh, project and frankly, uh, uh, I, I don't see, I see a variation on a theme. Uh, I don't, I'm not disturbed by the fact that uh, the pattern of the neighborhood is slightly varied. We're not dealing with Levittown here, for those of us who are from the eastern part of the United States. Um, these are, for the most part, custom homes, and variations are allowed so long as they are compatible, and I find this to be compatible. So I could certainly approve it. Thank you. Committee Member Chow. Well, I think the reason I had this point out is that was something I was looking into, um, kind of um, reflecting what the uh, committee member Adnish was uh, commenting. Um, I think a family room addition is totally fine, uh, but I, I was also a little bit concerned, at least just wanted 
um, look into a little more and say, hey, is this a really nice balance uh, that how much we're pushing into the backyard? Um, I see, we, we, we have been seeing a lot of these projects, they, people don't touch the front and they just push, push, push in the back. It's like, well, you are losing a lot of the nice backyard and uh, um, trying to max out everything. So um, that is something uh, I did notice and I also uh, think about it. So I also would like to see perhaps we shift the balance a little bit and um, uh, maybe have a way, if we don't shift the balance, for example, on the family group side, perhaps bring back the, the green extension. Thank you. Um, I respect the, 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 the due diligence done by, by our committee members. Um, however, I'm looking at, at a, a presumably an updated Google map, and two homes to the west, uh, to on the same street of Shakespeare and to the north of Wallingford, have the exact jut out on the west elevation of those homes. That's this would be that, a lot deeper. For a I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, this one would be a lot deeper than that. I did know that there was a little bit of a I mean, it, from the, I mean, at least from what I can tell from the plans, to the, from the back of the addition to the home, it's showing 39 feet setback. So um, at, at 16 feet wide, so it, it, it's not, I mean, it's on an 80 foot lot, you know, it's a quarter of, of the lot that's protruding back. Um, and, the, and the homes I'm referencing is the two to the west. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, so I, I think they are in line with the neighborhood. I don't think it's something that's a, a, a true that aberration, the but. Yes, that's the only one in the that has that. So um, I would be able to support the project as submitted. Um, do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll move. I would. I'll move to approve DRC 19-96. I'll second. Roll call, please. Committee Member Chow? No. Committee Member Brody? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? No. Vice Chair Bettnich? No. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion fails. Motion fails. Uh, do we have another motion? Yes. Um, I would uh, move to continue um, design review case 19-96 to allow the applicant to um, work on shifting a little bit of the massing, or shifting the massing. Motion with Vice Chair Bandage. Do we have a second? A second, yeah. Committee Member Chow with a second. Roll call, please. Committee Member Chow? Yes. Committee, committee Member Brody? No. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Committee Member Batnich? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. And um, can we specify a date for the continuance? Okay. Yes, so uh, when would the next available date be for the continuance? April 1st. April 1st, mm -hmm. at which time the club plans would be due back on? March 16th. March 16th. Is the uh, applicant amenable to getting back revised plans per the comments heard by yeah. March 16th? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our next agenda item, it's agenda item number six, design review case number DRC 20-03. Roll uh, Staff report, please. Um, I'd like to clarify before presenting the staff report that paragraph two of the project description contains an incomplete sentence. Uh, I'd like to clarify for the record that the proposed gate will swing in as shown on the attached site plan. Uh, item six is a request to construct a driveway gate at 2133 Roanoke Road along the rear side of the property adjacent to a service alley. The proposed gate will measure six feet in height and will be made of matte black wrought iron frame with cedar tummy roof vertical panels painted dark brown to match the existing fence and the trim of the house. Staff finds that the height and the location of the gate are consistent with the other gates found on the block and will not impede pedestrian or vehicular traffic. Staff can support the request. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for staff? Seeing none, is the applicant present? Yes. I brought you guys a sample as well. In case you want to see it. Uh, my name is John DeYoung. I'm the Civic Coast Contractor. I'm the general contractor for the Bay Janians. I live at 224 North Canyon Boulevard, Monrovia. And we're looking to do a double in swing driveway gate, electric driveway gate. Uh, it looks similar to this, only obviously grander. Are there any questions for the applicant? 
Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, can we? Can you pass the sample? Is it heavy? It's, it's a little heavy. Right, it's not that bad. It's, uh, it's wrought iron and uh, three quarter inch tongue and groove cedar. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. No questions for the applicant? Uh, this is members of the public can come forward to speak for against this project. Seeing them, we'll close the public comment and move on to committee member discussions. Committee member Badge. I'm sorry. Committee member Layla. Uh, I think this is a, a great project and uh, it matches the house. A lot of, uh, for the neighbors, for the property. Thank, Thank you. Committee member Brody. Yeah, I, I have no problem uh, approving this. Thank you. Committee member Chow. Yes, I can also support it. Thank you. Uh, I agree. I think it's a good addition and I think it's going to um, be it's needed uh, given the alleyway in the back. Uh, do we have a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, I have a motion to approve uh, application number 2133. Uh, 2133 Roanoke Road, DRC Case C2003. Uh, Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Committee Member Chow? Yes. Committee Member Brody? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Chair Chen? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Now we'll move on to agenda item number seven, design review case number DRC 19 89, 1650 Las Flores Avenue. Staff report, please. Uh, item six is a request to install a material not found in the city's pre-approved roofing materials list at 1650 Glass Flores Avenue. The applicant proposes to install, install certainty presidential composition fiberglass shake in the Solaris shadow gray color. While the certainty presidential product line is on the pre-approved list, the Solaris shadow gray color is subject to design review committee approval. The request also does not meet the prerequisite of having permitted composition fiberglass roofing material currently existing on the home. Because the legal neighborhood consists of a variety of architectural styles with varying roofing materials, including composition fiberglass, staff finds that the proposed material would be compatible with the legal neighborhood and can support the project. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for staff? Is the applicant present? Please come forward and state your name and address. Hi, uh, my name is George. Address is 1650 Los Flores Avenue. Uh, just a couple of quick points. Uh, there are eight homes in the region in that neighborhood that already have this type of uh, roofing material. And also this material is well, yeah, this material is actually um, city approved. And we're willing to also switch the color to country gray because we at first we thought shadow gray was was in uh, was also approved color. Um, uh, that's it. Um, we got some signatures and one objection. <laughs> Do you have a sample of the material? Oh, or the staff? Yeah, I can talk about And also, just to state the objection, uh, the the material is also Class A fire resistant. I have the certificate of compliance here. I think I can see that. So you're changing the color now from the the one that's on. Uh, yeah. If, if you guys want, that's fine. Which color yeah. you want? The, the one we applied for was shadow gray, but we, we thought that was a approved color, but it's not, so we're okay for going country gray. I mean, we're not going to wear it anymore. Is that like a difference of why you're asking? I thought it was just country gray. No, there were no other countries that might. Okay. We asked the question. Oh, sorry. Just addition. So the current roof is wood shake, so it's actually the current roof is a fire hazard, and we're changing it out to presidential TL. To clarify, the request is for the Solaris color. Um, it is the version of the color that meets the California Title 24 requirement. Is a Solaris only? Yes. Not the other one that's on the list. Correct. So this is Title 24 compliant. Yes. What we're reviewing today is the Solaris, and the applicant is proposing for shadow gray. However, they are amenable to the country gray if the Staff and if committee so requires, correct? That's right. Okay. Yes. Yes. So just point out, this is this is the one. The shadow, yes. The shadow, yes. Because I pass it along. Sure. Shadow time, but this is the alternate. So I. The shadow gray. The other one. That's not Solaris. It's not the same color as I shadow gray. The color is very similar. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
believe this one is slightly darker. That's the country gray. Yeah, that's what I... The shadow gray is darker than the country gray. However, both Solaris are vary from the standard uh, product line. Understood. Uh, sorry. No, we, don't have those, we don't have the regular colors. Uh, right. We do not wear. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any more so questions for the afternoon? Thank you. Uh, is there anyone from the committee that like to come, please come forward and state your name and address? Hi, my name is Buddha Lana. I'm from Ohio. Uh, I live in 16, Now, pre resolution number R-10 or 11, the requirement for approval clearly states permitted fire glass roofing material must currently exist on the home. Now, these conditions are put in place to safeguard the residents and uh, maintain the consistency of fishing. Now, I'm voicing my disapproval of the request for the fiberglass roofing material or any material not on the San Marino pre-approval code. Now, their property is originally wood shingle. And the neighboring homes who have remodeled have followed city code, including us and all the neighbors, because I've been there for 30 years, so I know every single of them. Now, also, the two property in the block that they do have fire glass roofing, they had the pre-existing material on the home. Therefore, they follow the city code. So, so this property should not be exception. And also, I would like to mention this one. The owner told me they know a member on the committee by the name of Kevin. They went to a school together and they are good friends. So they call Kevin and ask for his approval. And Kevin told them, yes, he's going to approve it. And that is to me is very disturbing. We go by the city code. There is no question about it. To me, this shouldn't be any question. There is a code, and we appreciate you people to reinforce it. We do not reinforce our friendship. Thank you so much. And I would like to follow the code of San Marino. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other members of the public like to come forward to speak for or against this project? Can I go up and talk? If you can please state your name and address. Yes. My name is Catherine Tan. I am the owner of 1650 Los Flores Avenue. And, um, I did speak to Ms. Rad there, and Kevin and I did go to high school, but he did not give me approval. He gave me um, just what the parameters are, and this material was, we're not asking for a material that's not already approved on the list, we're asking just a different color, because we went on the San Marino website, and this material is an approved material on the list. Um, the current wood shake is, uh, more fire hazard, a bigger fire hazard than the one that we're actually putting on to the roof. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the board that to come forward and speak for against this project? Seeing none, uh, we will move to committee member discussions. Committee member Lakon. Well, uh, I'm really confused. They need a new roof, and uh, they're not allowed to put shake back on, my, my understanding. So they have to either come up or else see your life, or they have to go with certainty. My impression was we didn't use the Solaris line. We had the, another line they offer. So now I don't understand which was their, what are their options that they're allowed to use. So um, I'm not ready to, um, I would not be ready to support it at this time. What is your bench? Okay. Um, I'm seeing that, so I, as I understand it, there's several factors here. One factor is that they have to come and ask us for approval because this was uh, a home that previously did not have a fiberglass roof. 
uh, I acknowledge that. And uh, if, if uh, one thing I want to pass along, uh, particularly to a um, neighbor um, who came to express her opinion, is that um, just recently there's a law passed that says you really can't replace your whole you can't replace your whole roof with wood shade anymore. So while it's very much appreciated that many of the neighbors, including you, um, followed the code and did what you were what what you had to do or what you did that you put forth effort to meet the city guidelines. Um, we're sort of in a new world here where we can't, uh, sadly, in my opinion, can't replace um, uh, wood shake with wood shake unless it's a partial, which is another can of worms to match things. So uh, we have we live in a different world now where we have to consider new materials. Um, we so, already tied. Well, that didn't you know, tiles. Every tiles, single yes. house in right. that. In a block, they keep the money and they replace the tiles. If committee members, if we can keep the committee, the discussions among the committee members. This yes. is not an open forum with the public at this time. Yes, so I was going to say so the options are the tiles, which really we have extremely limited options for that. And they have, they are problematic. I have those tiles, and you know, I recognize some of their shortcomings along with their advantages. Um, so having considered this, I actually think that this is a pretty good um, house to put this uh, material on. I think the color is appropriate. I think it's probably one of the better choices for um, of roofing materials for this home. And it's my hope that as a neighbor and as the other neighbors, um, that the other neighbors will, uh, will find it sooner. <coughs> Thank you. Committee Member Brody. Yeah, the presidential certainty line is an upgrade line. Uh, this is not the uh, low-end fiberglass uh, roofing material that uh, is seen on uh, some uh, lesser uh, applications. This is uh, really near the top of the line, uh, and I can approve it with the uh, the coloration of uh, shadow gray, I think, would be appropriate at that level. Thank you. Committee Member Chai. Um, I guess my evaluation um, needs some help. Um, can I ask a question to the staff? Sure. The prerequisite that, um, as the neighbor's concern or a comment, that it needs to have existing fiberglass in order to do another fiberglass, is that correct? That is correct, um, and, but I would like to also mention that if the co home currently has fiberglass and is coming back to do fiberglass, that home is only limited to the two products on the back of the list. Um, otherwise, right. that home will yeah, have to come in front of the committee also. still a list. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a code for that pre-register. Yes, this product is on the list. However, the specific color that this applicant is asking for is not on the list. So not only the product has to be on the list, it also has to comply with the specific color identified on the list as well. So in, in this right. case, it's really the, the color. The product is on the list, but they currently do not have five cars. So that they don't meet that prerequisite. Correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so that, you know, unfortunately, right? I think um, my opinion is that uh, they do not meet the prerequisite, so they have to figure out something else to put on. Thank you very much. Um, I take exception to comments made during the public comment portion. Um, I did. I am a resident of San Marino for the last thirty six years, and I uh, did go to schools in San Marino from kindergarten through twelfth grade. So. Uh, it's not unusual that I would know uh, an applicant who does live in the city or is returning to the city. Um, specific to the proposal in front of us, I think the color recommendation that the applicant is proposing is more suitable for the house, uh, given that the Solaris product is a Title 24 uh, compliant uh, material, and uh, there is a requirement that we meet Title 24 requirements in the state of California. As well as the composition fiberglass roofing being a class A fire rated material, I think it's appropriate for the home. I think it's compatible with the home and compatible with the neighborhood, and I'd be able to support it. 
Is there a motion? I'll move to approve DRC 19-89 with the uh, coloration of the shadow gray. Thank you. Is there a uh, motion with committee member Brody? Is there a second? I'll second that. Vice Chair Banish with a second. Roll call, please. Committee member Chow. Chow. Sorry, roll call, please. Committee member Chow. No. Committee member Brody. Yes. Committee member Lacon. Uh, no. Vice Chair Batnich? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to our next agenda item for the evening. Excuse me. Can I see something? Uh, I'm sorry, there, the public comment portion has been closed. Not, not there, and so at the beginning of the, the hearing, there is an opportunity for appeals. If, if not a, the appeal. I'm just saying one question I have. As far as I remember, when you know the person, the applicant, that person normally, well, you know, if you have, if you know them, you kind of put aside and say, well, I put my, you know, opinion. So I'm no, sorry, we've closed public comment portion. I know, I, uh, I if you have questions, you can bring it up with the. Well, I'm going to take it to the media because you're doing a favor. Because they told me specifically, you told them. You, they told me specifically, you told them, and you're going to vote yes for them. That's what they told me. So that is not, you should actually say that, because I know we will have to move on. Ma'am, we need to move on. If you have issues, you can bring it up with the staff, or you can appeal the case. Okay, I'm going to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item for the evening. And eight is a request to construct a 741 square foot single story in addition to an existing two story home and exterior modifications located at 811 San Anita Avenue. The exterior modifications include removal of the green wood shake along the front of the house and installation of bone white wood siding with eight inch exposure to match the existing siding along the sides of the home. The stone veneer under uh, seen under the bay windows will be replaced with a true brick to match the existing chimney and the roof will be replaced with a boral cedar light simulated wood shake in the ironwood color found on the pre-approved materials list. The proposed addition would not be visible from the street and would not detract from the existing home's compatibility with the neighborhood. The addition also does not provide any direct sight lines into the neighbor's home and our setbacks are set back a significant distance and would not impact any reasonable expectation of privacy. Staff finds that the proposed addition will, will complement the existing home and can support the single story addition. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff regarding this project? Yes? No? Yeah. Oh, none? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to the applicant. Is the applicant present? You can take your name and address. Uh, I'm David Chairman and committee member. My name is Timmy Han. I'm architect, and my address is 9923 uh, 19, Temple City. Uh, this, this application is uh, uh, renovation to the existing house and uh, the room addition uh, at the rear of the house. And uh, for the uh, uh, renovation, the existing is uh, uh, wood share is now the, for, for the fire protection. And the window and it to be replaced. Uh, it was a uh, uh, steel uh, casing, a uh, single casing. And uh, the portion of the uh, entire house is like a uh, wood siding. And only uh, a small portion at the front is wood shape, is uh, out of day. And the special the color is, uh, is, is not uh, compatible with the neighbor. And the existing uh, uh, stone veneers under the bay window is cracked, so it's to be replaced. Uh, and we use the brick is match with the chimney. And for the uh, the rear uh, addition, uh, because the the two story building uh, they use the wood wood siding for the entire uh, two story uh, portion. And the the one story at the south south side is uh, stucco. So I'm adding um, um, addition at the, at the uh, north wing. So it's, I, I still use choose the stucco to match with the, the south wing. And uh, the, I create a, a, a coal yard. So and, uh, and, this, and there's a, a access from the family room and the master room. So, so, so the power barrier won't go to the rear. 
so to make the uh, and uh, too long for the entire house, and uh, it decreased the, the noise to the both side of uh, the neighbor. And I have an example and colorful. And this is true. It's natural wood. Uh, wood side only the exposure. This is five inch, but we use a uh, eight inch. It's just a sample. And this one is fire protection and uh, and the pressure treated. And so it's a moisture protection too. And here's the the, the color code. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, yeah. Maybe Lake, huh? uh, I uh, the chimney that you're that you're at your eye fireplace in the addition, correct? Chimney? Another no, it's uh, another fireplace. They, they don't have a chimney. It's go through the yeah. It's so, go through the the wall. The wall. Where yeah. Is it, where does it vent? The vent go just direct behind the behind. It's a gas burning. Okay. Like a water heater, they should direct it go through the wall. There's no no chimney. So there's no. Yeah. Right. We call we 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 call indirect fire fireplace. Just direct going up. Does it make a lot of exhaust or I don't know that works. Don't like water, yeah, you know. And very far away. You know, yeah. This is uh, 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 ICPO approval. And I, I noticed that you're you're uh, requesting to move the walkway to another direction. Because the existing walkway fits into the to the uh weather. To the what? To the Huizabi Street. Street. You know, sometimes we, we, you know, maybe <coughs> someone get a drunk with the direct car, you know, come to the, to, to the walkway, so. So, our, okay. <laughs> I was thinking, because it's, it, now it's now the, the, For the psychology, we don't like the walkway facing to the T, T. Street, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's now it, it's replaced, oh, no, but it's opposed to the neighbors, and I thought that would cause oh, no, the neighbors' visitors to park next to the driveway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much. We'll open to public comment. Any members of the board? Good evening, <laughs> DRC chair. Can you please come to speak in them? Good evening, DRC Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Eva and Marlon. Uh, we, my name is Tom, Carolyn Liu, my wife. We're both the owners of the property, and we're over 20 current years resident. current residents of San Marino. And we're just uh, time for a change and looking to uh, move into a new uh, location. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been here for the last. 20 years, and you know, in addition to the change, we have elderly parents, and we're looking to move them in with us too, because uh, it gets to a stage where they need um, additional care. So uh, we've been working closely with Freeman, along with Christine, and then Eva Marlin, who, yeah, and Eva and Marlin recently, welcome to the team, um, who have been very professional and, and helpful. Uh, we uh, took their guidelines, feedback, and you know, made. A lot of the changes to make this as clean as possible. Um, so hopefully, uh, yeah, the clean and compatible um, to code. And uh, we're excited, and hopefully, you know, things will go well. And we're looking forward to another 20 year plus at this new location. Thank you very much. Uh, seeing no more public comment, we'll close the public comment portion. Move to committee member discussions. Committee member Lake Park.
those aluminum side windows, they're not paint. You can't paint them once they're in, so they would be brown. I just think that would look out of place. Uh, I had questions about the uh, the roof lines. Uh, the, the addition is a different uh, scope, which I thought was a top one. towards the back can be better integrated into the architecture of the main part of the house. Uh, the, there's an elevation that we're kind of missing in the back. I don't know if we're really missing it or I don't, I can't visualize